You are watching Beyond Markets. I am Christy Cole. Welcome. On the show today, we will attempt to understand more about Nigeria's cement industry. You can join the conversation with the hashtag Beyond Markets and follow my Twitter handle at Christy Kopi. Chairman and CEO of the Boa Group, Abdul Samad Rabiu, says Nigeria's yearly cement production capacity is not up to its true potential. I caught up with him to get more clarity on Nigeria's cement industry. Have a look. Quite a few, actually. The first is the capacity. You know, um, as you know, in Nigeria here, even though we have, you know, uh, huge volumes, you know, over 30 to 35 million tons of cement produced every year. Now, although the in-stock capacity is more than that, <coughs> but we still need more, simply because with the population of almost 200 million people, Nigeria is at maybe 100 and, you know, 20, 130 kilograms per head. That is very low compared to other African countries. More so when Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. So we need to have, you know, more plants. At 30, 35 million tons per annum is not enough. You know, we are not there. And I think we need to be at least, you know, uh, uh, 200 or more kilograms per head, which is, you know, uh, over 40 to 50 million tons per annum. So the capacity is important. And also the location of the plant, you know, is also very important, you know, because Sokoto is far away from you know, uh, most of the ports in the country. And if you do not have the cement there, that would mean either you bring it from the southern part of the country or you import, although importation is normal. So the location is key and also the proximity to, you know, um, Niger Republic and Benin Republic is also very important because that is, you know, uh, an area where you could actually export and you know, um, you know, and foreign exchange, you know, for the company and for the country. And again, as uh, I keep saying, you know, this is the biggest investment, you know, in the northwestern part of Nigeria. And it's the only, you know, cement plant in the northwestern part of Nigeria. And the market there is quite big. And on top of that, you create jobs, you know, a lot of jobs, you know, 2,000, you know, direct jobs and over 10,000 indirect jobs you know so those are some of you know the you know uh, benefits of you know the plant you know in Sokoto state correct me if i'm wrong mr chairman so uh, we, we're looking at a 350 million dollar worth of investment and it's been described as the largest single investor private sector led investor in nigeria's northwest i'd like you to at this point talk us through the collaborations that you had to go through to bring this project to life well as uh, you know uh, it's already an existing, you know, uh, cement plant, you know, there for quite some time. You know, the cement company of northern Nigeria, which are, which we are the majority, you know, owners, shareholders in that company. And we actually, you know, saw that there were quite a lot of opportunities, you know, to set up an additional line there. Because if you look at the deposits of limestone that we have in Sokoto State, you know, in general, I'm not even talking about, you know, um, you know, the Sokoto cement or Kalambayana cement. You know, the state itself is sitting in huge, you know, uh, deposits of limestone. We decided, you know, to increase, you know, uh, the capacity there. But we did it in such a way that it would be an independent line simply because, you know, with that, you'd be able, you know, to maybe merge with the other company that we have been CC. And, and but because you know being the largest shareholder and also other shareholders who are not you know ready to participate or to invest at the time we decided to do it on our own so we engaged you know the state government and other stakeholders you know the Kalambaina community you know the head of the community there said King Gavas has really been very very you know cooperative and uh, together with the state government and decided to start, set up this plant so now we're seeing um a plant that has capacity to produce as much as um, 2 million metric tons per One, annum. 1.5 million tons, this plant, yeah. 1.5 million metric tons per annum. From 
um, Edo State last year, Obu. Now we're talking Kalambaina. And then I hear there's another Obu line too coming up at the end of the year. Give us some details on Boa Group's expansion projects. Well, we started as, you know, you just mentioned, you know, with our first greenfield plant, you know, that is the Edo Line 1, which was commissioned last year. You know, production actually started, you know, a couple of years ago. And it was, uh, you know, commissioned as, you know, by the by His Excellency, the Vice President. And at that same commissioning, he performed, you know, the you know groundbreaking for the second line. And that line is uh, to be completed, God willing, by the end of this year. So by the time that is completed, the second line is completed, we'll be having about 6 million tons in uh, Obu, Edo State. And also with Kalambana, together with the CC, CCNN line, you know, we'll be having 2 million tons. So combined, by the end of the year, our total production lines will be about 8 million tons in total as a group, as a, you know, as a group. So to me, that is, uh, quite substantial. So with that, we don't know whether, you know, because the issue here, the challenge here is being able to, you know, operate these plants efficiently. It makes a lot of sense to have maybe one, two lines in a particular plant. Because if you have more than two lines, especially if they are about three million tons each or more, uh, it is very difficult, you know, to be efficient simply because of, you know, logistics. For example, with uh, a three million, you know, tons line, you would need daily, you know, about 9,000 tons of cement produced every day. And that means about 300, you know, trucks uh, a day every day. So if you have two lines, that means five to six hundred tons a day every. So logistically, sometimes it could be a problem if you have more than two lines. Hence the reason why we try to limit, you know, uh, these plants to only maybe maximum of two lines. So if we need to do, you know, to expand, you know, it would pr probably be in another area. However, because of the spread that we have in Nigeria, sometimes it's a bit of an issue. If you look at the southwest, the market here is huge, but we have quite a number of plants in uh, in the southwestern part of Nigeria. You have Dangote, you have Lafarge, you know, and you know, Ibeshi alone is four lines, and then you have Lakatabu. So it is very difficult to come to the southwest. North Central, you know, uh, is, is also more or less, you know, uh, chopped up, you know, because of you know, Obajana, and of course, Edo is just about 200 kilometers away from there. So we'd have to look at, you know, maybe the northern part of the country. Of course, we have limestone deposits, you know, uh, in some of the states in the northern part of Nigeria. But the problem is energy, because the biggest, you know, uh, input that you need in any cement plant is, of course, as you know, energy. And because, you know, uh, there is no gas in the northern part of Nigeria, it becomes very, very difficult, you know, to set up these plants in Nigeria. Sokoto cement is unique in the sense that, you know, um, we have, you know, a coal mill. Of course, you can have a coal mill, but then again, you have to either import or use part of what we have in Kogi State, which the quality is not the best, meaning that sometimes maybe you have to blend with an imported, you know, a coal. So the challenge of setting up plants in the north is, you know, energy, is lack of energy. And that is why it is very difficult, you know, because if you set up more than one plant, you know, the requirement for even coal, for example, is huge. And for oil, for example, you know, uh, even for a plant like what we have, the 1.5 million tons, you know, in uh, Sokoto, if one, you know, if it wasn't for the coal mill that we have now, would be requiring about 15, maybe even 16 milliliters of oil every month. And that is about 500, 600, you know, tons a day, every day. So logistically, you know, it is, uh, it could be quite a night, you know, a nightmare. Hence the reason why you see a lot of people are shying away from setting up, you know, plants in the north. But again, as I said, you know, proximity is key and the quality of the limestone is, uh, is, uh, is very good. But the biggest issue is actually, uh, uh, lack of, uh, you know, energy like gas and, 
you know, especially gas more than anything. So that is why it is very difficult to cite, you know, huge plants in the north. You know, hence the reason why we're just watching to see with the capacity that we have both in Edo and Sokoto for now, I think, you know, we have, uh, is, is sufficient for now. Of course, you know, the market needs more because I believe that, you know, as I mentioned, as I said earlier, with a population of over 200 or 200 million people and with only, um, you know, production, you know, lines of not more than 35 million tons per annum, Nigeria definitely needs, you know, more cement plants. So the only, probably the only area or areas where you can, you know, comfortably site these plants and be efficient and profitable, probably maybe uh, the southwest and maybe southeast, even though they don't have, you know, gas there, but, you know, proximity to gas is much closer than, say, maybe to the northern part of Nigeria. So two things stand out for me now. Focusing on areas where you have core competitive advantage, mm. you've highlighted that, yeah. and then you've gone ahead to talk about braving the odds while still highlighting the logistical challenges that could come with the business. So in the midst of all of this, when you consider all the factors that you have just laid bare, what opportunities would you say exists for private sector investments in Nigeria's cement manufacturing sector? There's still quite a lot of uh, you know opportunities. As I said, the demand is, is a lot more than you know the, the supply. And if you look at it, as I said, you know, Nigeria is 200 million people. What we're producing today is about 30, 35 million tons. So per head is under 200 kilograms. And that is very low compared to, 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 you know, uh, other countries, even in Africa. And if you look at the price of cement, even though I know a lot of people are, you know, shouting that the price of cement in Nigeria is, is quite high. I was going to ask you that in the midst of what you've just said now, where is the case for the price cuts coming from? Yeah, what well, is If demand is, still outweighs supply. Yeah, that is what it is, you know, because even ourselves, you know, the manufacturers, sometimes Sudan would decide that, look, let's actually bring the price of cement, you know, lower than what it is. But it is not is easy. Is that doable? No, it is not, because, you know, if even if you do that, you know, the, you know, middlemen, distributors are the ones making all the money. Because today, for example, if we have one line or one plant, you know, short for whatever reason, even for maintenance, you see the price of cement just skyrocketing easily simply because we don't, we don't have enough. That is why even during the rainy season, you see that a lot of demand is always there. But the thing that I think needs to be done more than anything is that people need to do more. You know, the infrastructure is the biggest issue we have. For example, I have a plant in Edo, Obu, Edo State, and I have to send cement to Kano, for example, it's about four, five hundred kilometers. I have to transport it. We don't have rail lines, you know, we don't have good roads, you know, and it is very difficult, it is very expensive, you know, to transport most, you know, you know, goods and services, you know, from, you know, parts of this country. So that is part of the reason. The cost of transportation, for example, per bag of cement from, say, Edo State to even Kano, we are not even talking about Maiduguri or Yola or Sokoto. It's about six, seven hundred naira per bag, which is fourteen, you know, thousand naira per ton. That is about, you know, forty, fifty dollars. Just transportation alone. Mm -hmm. That is almost a third of the cost of the brand, of the product. So those are some of the issues that we need to look at. That is why it is important, you know, to be able to site plants, you know, all over the country. It's good to, to stagger them. But as I mentioned, part of the problem has always been uh, energy, because if you don't have energy, you will not be able to to produce cement. And if you do not have gas, you know it is also very very difficult. You know what we are doing in in Sokoto right now is quite brave. You know, although as I said, you know we are going to be using coal mostly, and the coal that we'll be using, you know, most of it will be coming from Nigeria, which is also coming from, you know, uh, Kogi. But then again, the distance from Kogi to Sokoto is much closer than say from Port Harcourt or from Lagos if you have to import, you know, to Sokoto. So those things, you know, are definitely uh, important, you know. But again, you know, price of cement, going back to the issue of price, if you look at the price of cement in Nigeria today, at 2,200 naira per bag, that is what to sell X factory. It's about, you know, 44,000 naira or maybe 45,000 naira uh, a ton. That is about $120. At $120, you know, the price is not really that high compared to other parts of the 
you know, other parts of Africa. If you go to Burkina Faso, for example, the price of cement there is about 160 euros. That is almost $200 a ton. That is almost double. Of course, there are some countries that prices are cheaper. But if you look at the challenges that we have in Nigeria, and you look at the price that we're selling, it's not too bad, really. That was Abdul Samad Rabiu, Chairman and CEO, Boa Group. We continue our discussion after the break. Stay with us. As we continue my discussion with the chairman and CEO of Bua Group, we find out what's in the pipeline for mergers and IPOs. Ever since the CCNN went to the NSC to give the information on the merger, talks about Bua cement listing has been rife. I'm sure that that's not news to you. Yeah, so I'd like so. to know firsthand where you stand on that. Are we seeing an IPO anytime soon? We are looking... What, what it is is that... As you just mentioned CCNN is already a listed company and we're the majority you know shareholders of that company and Kalambaina and CCNN uh, you know margin we have you know of course it is uh, public information we have applied you know to merge the two companies we are waiting but because that is an ongoing thing and we haven't received you know uh, fit any feedback yet from the government I would rather not discuss that further but what we're trying to do actually is to merge the two businesses together and then I take it from there. As I said, CCNN is already a listed entity, so it should be easier, much easier to do that. Of course, we have Obu, which, you know, uh, hopefully, as I said, you know, the second line uh, will be commissioned by the, end of this, by the end of this year. So with Obu and, you know, the enlarged, you know, CCNN, if you may, then maybe, you know, going forward, we'll try and see what we can do, you know, with the two entities because if you look at the two businesses you know combined we'll be looking at you know eight million tons in terms of you know uh production and eight million tons per annum uh is huge you know uh because that is over 30 percent maybe 35 percent of the entire volumes produced in nigeria i'm not talking about installed capacity now i'm talking about production you know, I earlier I mentioned, you know, that sometimes it's a bit challenging, you know, for you to be able to be very efficient if you have more than two lines in any given, yes, you know, you plant, that. of course. So you see, if um, even though we have a stock capacity here in Nigeria of close to uh, maybe 38, maybe 40 million tons, but in terms of actual production, if you look at the numbers, and these are public, this is public information as well. Uh, you see that volume, you know, the, the volume produced, you know, for in the whole country 2017, just over 21, 22 million tons, maybe. So by the time we do, we'll be doing 8 million tons, that would be over 30 percent of that. It's not, it's not enough, to be honest. You know, Nigeria needs to definitely do more, you know, and uh, I look forward to, you know, actually, you know, to the opportunities where we'll be able to set up more plants in Nigeria simply because, you know, uh, we're growing and uh, Nigeria is a big country. And if you look at other countries, you see that what they're doing is a lot more than what we have in Nigeria. But then again, you know, I was at a forum the other day and people were saying, why is it that people are not doing more? I say it's simply because of, you know, uh, access to finance. You know, to set up a cement plant is not easy in Nigeria. As I mentioned, because you set up, you have to put up the plant, and then you have to do your power. You have to do all the. So by the time you add all those things, you'll be looking at hundreds of millions of dollars. So access to that kind of money also is not doesn't come easy at all. And uh, you know, I would actually, you know, want a situation where you know government you know comes in and somehow find a way, not necessarily give people money, but support. You know, have a policy in place. You know that will support people or companies, you know, doing this kind of thing. You know, at the commissioning, you know, uh, the day before, I mentioned that when we started construction of this Kalambaina plant, it was at the height of the foreign exchange crisis. And it was a big problem because we signed the contract and, and then suddenly, you know, uh, dollar went to 400, 450 naira and you could not even get it from the CBN. But, you know, the Mr. President, you know, directed that, you know, uh, industries, agriculture, 
that must be given priority in terms of foreign exchange allocation. And the CBN actually, you know, helped quite so a lot. So are you actually seeing policies from the government favoring in the that, sector? In that aspect, yes. You know, they actually did. You know, and uh, we had serious issues, although we had to, you know, maybe at some point, you know, uh, we had to buy money at, you know, quite a high rate. But, you know, the policy really helped, you know, because we were able to access, you know, foreign exchange from the CBN. You know, at you know, at, at at the prevailing CBN rate, you know, at the time, and that was much lower than what you know it was outside, you know, the the CBN. So that you know quite helped, you know, a great deal, you know. And without that, it would have actually been quite difficult for us to complete this project, you know, because you can imagine getting over three hundred million dollars, and most of it was in foreign exchange, you know, because. The importation of the equipment and what have you. So it was quite challenging, but you know that policy actually did help. Yeah. So analysts who have been looking at the manufacturing and industrial goods sector, cement particularly, say that the the sector is ripe for exports. Mm. To what extent would you say that Boa Cement is positioned to tap it to, uh, to key into this opportunity? Two things, you know, for us because we are just next door say to Niger Republic and to also um, Benin Republic, it is quite easy for us. It is closer for me to take my cement to um, Niamey in Niger than to Kano, for example. And the moment you cross the border, believe it or not, the roads are much, much better there in Niger than in Nigeria. So my trucks don't suffer. The distance is less. The roads are better, you know, and all of that. So it is easier for me. And the price is the same. Yeah, they in Nigeria. And you get paid in dollars, <laughs> you know. So it's a no-brainer. Even though one would prefer to actually, you know, satisfy... Local demand. The local demand. But, you know, it is uh, very you know, difficult for one not to be in a position to say, look, we need to export, simply because, you know, of what I just uh, mentioned, it becomes very tempting when you are just next door, you get paid in dollars, the roads are good, you go and come back someday, and all of that. So, export, yes, but for people that are very close to the border, you know, from Obu in Edo, it would be very difficult for me to even attempt to export cement to any country at all because the distance is far you know from there to say Niger Republic or if you are going south you know to Benin Republic. So does this go back to the uh, case to the case for staggering the plants such that it gives you access? Well yes exports? it does you know but then again you know even the local markets here you know the local markets in Nigeria because for example in the northwest mm -hmm. if we didn't have Sokoto cement how would Sokoto or KB or Zamfara for example get their cement? They have to get it either from uh, uh, either from Edo or Bajana or from uh, the northeast, you know, the, the Lafarge plant, you know, which is, uh, which is Ashaka. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, that is what it is. So the cost would be high because anywhere where you have to transport, you know, product three, four, five hundred kilometers is at least forty, fifty dollars a ton. That is what it is. So staggering the plant is important, you know, because then you are able to cater to those markets, the catchment areas. Same thing, you know, if you go to um, some of the plants that we have in, in the south, you know. So it is important for that, you know. But as I said, you know, it is important to do those. You know, I mean, in the northeast, for example, yes, we have Ashaka. Ashaka is in Gombe. But look at Meduguri, look at Yola. They have a lot of limestone in those areas. But they can, nobody can go there and shut up a plant simply because of the same issues are mentioned and the market is there so we need to actually do more government needs to do more to see how they can support you know industries you know to be able to have them scattered all over the country because these industries are needed not only cement so many other you know areas you know that we have raw materials in nigeria like iron ore for example that we can set up steel plants and what have you so and and I'm sure you know with time maybe government would definitely do something that to support you know the industries.
That was Abdul Samad Rabiu, Chairman and CEO, Boa Group. And that's it on Beyond Markets for today. Thank you for joining us. Remember that you can watch all previous episodes of Beyond Markets on our website on cnbcafrica.com. And stay engaged with the hashtag Beyond Markets and follow me too at Christy Kopi. From me and the rest of the team, it's bye for now.